I didn't want to be someone who teaches you how to build a million dollar business, but never did one. I didn't want to be someone who tells you how to do something they have never done themselves. And there are more people out there that are preaching and teaching, but haven't actually created the success in their own right. If you want to succeed, you want to make a difference, you want to help other people, be the example and just go first. When you understand that your business is you and you are your business and people are buying you, then you're set to win. If you're growing a business, looking to build a business, you're not going to have all the answers. You're not going to know everything to do. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail. And if you don't, it meant you never tried. So if you don't go out and make mistakes, it means you didn't fail. You should find a niche that you fall in love with. You want to do something that just brings you joy because when it brings you joy, it's not work. I wouldn't want to have to spend the time and energy on something I didn't love passionately. All right, everyone. Welcome back to Jill Collins Connections. We're here once again with one of my truly favorite people on the planet, Lisa Lieberman Wang. Lisa has helped me so much in my career and in my coaching business. And I can't wait to share her tips with you today. She actually was on, um, on an earlier episode with her husband talking about how they manage business and, and their careers and the, their marriage at the same time. But today we have Lisa back talking specifically about her latest program called How to S Build a Seven Figure Coaching Business. And it's awesome. She has a book that she's written. She's a number one international best-selling author and an acclaimed business marketing strategist. She brings over 30 years of experience in guiding top tier coaches and consultants. So she, I know her because she's a Tony Robbins platinum partner and person and a trainer for Tony Robbins. So she's got a wealth of knowledge and experience. You're going to love this one today. I highly recommend you get your pen and paper out and share this with your friends because you're going to want to really dive into this today. So welcome back, Lisa. How are you today? I'm doing outstanding. I'm excited to be back and to have a different conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, you, your career spans decades. I mean, you started out as a former fortune 500 executive and you're, you're great at sales. You're the best salesperson I know on the planet uh, <laughs> with generating over 165 million in personal sales. And you've led teams um, to peak performance all over the world. And it's just, you're amazing. So I'd love to dive in <clears throat> since your, your, your professional corporate career, you had a little bit of a setback, but you started Find a Fab, and that was your first entree, I think, into your book, your first book. Is that right? It was my first entree into my first book, right. I, I feel like the whole career has been corporate America at the very beginning, and then going through trials and tribulations of life, what everybody doesn't see behind the curtain, and finally came out, as my mother so nicely said, it's like, oh, you, you finally let your secret out, came out of the closet, and started showing people that success leaves clues, but also sometimes behind it, we may be hurting ourselves. So despite the success, I had this tumultuous journey that ended up turning into a fabulous life. So <laughs> you do have a fabulous life. I love following you and your husband, Yardley, your dear friends of mine. And I love um, seeing how your lives are just transforming every day and you're living the life of your dreams, which everyone would love to see and uh, would love to have as well. So I want you to inspire our guests today in ways that they've never thought were possible, things for themselves that they can do, that even people who aren't a coach yet, or maybe want to be a coach, or people tell them they should coach or that they should um, have some kind of business, how do they do it? And, and, and uh, where do they get started? But before we do that, I'd like to find out and for you to share with us how did how what was it like growing up for you how did you i mean were you always this inspiring did you always have like just this great motivator and just you knew you this is who you were oh that would have been nice <laughs> i think the expression is you take your mess and you make it your message i fortunately grew up in a very um traditional middle class family where people said disparaging words and I realized that I was not living the world of Leave It to Beaver. And I think only people our age may know that show, but <laughs> Leave It to Beaver, where everybody was perfect, everyone was nice, everyone was polite to each other. It's not quite what I remembered. And I had a situation with my dad where he just wanted perfect children. And I didn't know that there was no such thing as perfect children. So I did my best at all times, but never at a level that was good enough. And because of it, you know, I kept trying harder, 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 harder on the good note. It made me even more successful than I could have ever imagined because 
and you know, an A wasn't even good enough anymore, or I had to have scholarships. I had to have um, organizations be, I had to be part of organizations. I had to make big dents in the world. I remember very early on, I'm 23 years old and I own my own computer consulting company. And when my friends are going out playing, I'm over here trying to manage seven employees and I called it adult daycare. It was a very different life, but I was blessed with the fact that my dad was an engineer and my mom was a was an entrepreneur and I had the best of both worlds. My dad was a VP and in a big company, my mom owning business. I saw what it was like to be successful and was always told that you needed to be successful. So I turned around and told my parents I wanted to be a lawyer. And my dad said to me, no, you're going to go get your MRS degree. So Jill, I successfully got that twice, the Mrs. Degree. And, <laughs> and then you can get that one on the way home, right? And yeah. then I, he said, I'm not paying for college after that. Never thinking, Lisa, you can pay for your own college. I changed my degree and I said, well, I want to be a teacher. They said, teachers don't make enough money. It's like, okay, so I can't be a teacher. Then I thought about it. I said, okay, my brother's going to be an accountant. I'll be an accountant. I got a two-year accounting degree. It was bored silly. I hated it. I said, I can't be an accountant. I got to change my major and I changed it to marketing and business. And I fell in love with it. And that was really the gift for me because then I interned with IBM and then later MCI I worked for and ended up having a phenomenal corporate career. And I think the blessing was being an overachiever, but I didn't grow up this way. I and mean, when you asked that before, the answer is, you know, I grew up in a house where because dad wanted perfect children, he was very hard on us and both my brother and I. And because of it, no matter how great we were doing, no matter how much we showed up at our personal best, it was never enough. So it kept making us go more and more and more and more because of the challenges we had and in, in what our beliefs were and how you treat people and how things can be and versus how they were. So I did not grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth, although I certainly wanted to. I did not grow up as the princess I wanted to be, but I became one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today, I think that all the challenges and situations we had were the gifts, because had I not gone through that, I don't think I could serve my clientele the way I do today, where I do understand that every one of us had our own trials and tribulations. And it's not about what you went through, it's how you came through. And when you understand the difference, you can then create the life you want. And mm. That's where, you know, you and I being in the environment of Tony Robbins, and I'm with Tony for 30 years now, uh, as a capacity of being a participant or crew or leadership or trainer or, or platinum partner with him. And one thing is they say life is happening to when people say life is happening for you and people think it's happening to them, I realize in hindsight, life has totally happened for me and has prepared me to be where I am today. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I think that you said turning your mess into a message and the mess that, you know, you know, my background, you helped me create my first program, which I appreciate. And that was like really pulling teeth. I remember sitting in this very chair the, for about six months with you going through the agony of writing a program for um, divorced and widowed women. And, you know, I guess at some point, I know you didn't always, you know, when you started the find a fab, <clears throat> I think I, the reason I related to you is you is really where you started because when you, even when you got to Tony, you were you were not in the best spot, right? Mm -hmm. Tell no. us a little bit about what made you what inspired you to write Find a Fab. Where were you when that happened, or what, what you overcame? Well, it's quite interesting because I was introduced to Tony back when I was thirty years old, and I had a wonderful chiropractor and friend who said to me, "Oh, Tony's doing a fire walk. You have to go." And at the time, I actually was in a disease, and it's dis-ease with myself. And the disease was an eating disorder, and I was bulimic. I was binging and purging 18 times a day. I was consuming upwards of 18,000 calories a day. I was spending six figures on food. And you would have thought I was had a drug addiction because food could, it was as bad as that. And fortunately for me, I knew how to make money and build business. Unfortunately for me, I knew how to make money and I spent it on food that ended up in a porcelain toilet bowl. And I remember when she said to me, Tony's doing this fire walk, you have to go. I don't know anything. I don't even know who he is, right? So he just smiles and we keep walking. 
Fast forward that year at Date with Destiny, they were looking for someone suicidal and I never raised my hand. But I had found out from the answering the questionnaires and other things that I had written that they had me on the radar. And when it came time that they were looking for someone before I know it, Tony is asking me questions. And I don't know why he's asking me questions. And I don't know why he's bothering me because I didn't raise my hand when he was looking for people. In and the middle of the event. So there's all these it, people and your, your point, he's pointing out, he's like pointing you out. And, there's and 2,500 people there <clears throat> and he's calling me out. And I turned around and I had had a bad day. I just had like a couple of good days of abstinence with the food. And then all of a sudden I had a bad moment and I told my buddy. So I got angry at her going, did you say something? Like I'm over there blaming everybody of why I'm being called out. And sure enough, Tony calls me up on stage and four to six hours. I have no idea back then how long it was. I think I was in a trance. He starts working with me and then it continued even with their senior leaders and trainers who supported me that whole week after. And I had made a decision back then that uh, that was the beginning of the end of my dis-ease with myself. And I have now 30 years of abstinence come July, past July of hurting myself. And I said, I'm going to give back because other people were there to give to me. I want to make a difference. So I've been giving Tony upwards of a month a year for the better part of 30 years. We took a couple of years off, but pretty much I've been a volunteer and service and serving his community because it was the people there that made the difference for me. So I wanted to do that for someone else. It's like you can save a life. So the, where the turning point was, is I've always been good at business. I've always been good at sales. I understood it. And the only reason I was good at it is you can't, you can't influence people until you know what influences them. And I always understood human psychology and I studied it. It was like my undergraduate degree was human psychology because I loved it. I honestly was looking for what's wrong with me. <laughs> and I figured if I studied psychology, I'd figure that out to only find out there was nothing wrong with me. My dad just wanted something that didn't exist. A perfect child it doesn't exist. And I was already perfectly imperfect. And as I realized that, I was like, okay, so now I just started learning about human beings and who we are and how we show up. And when you do that and you're communicating with people every day and you understand business is just really listening to people, finding out what their needs are and giving them what they need. Now Lahav turned around, who's been a friend of mine for 30 years, turned around in Egypt and said to me, Lisa, you're supposed to be helping women. I said, no, Lauren, I teach people how to make money because that's what I've been doing for years. So I fast forward a year later, I come out of the, I, Yardley's upstairs. I call him handsome, as you know, and he's up on the landing. I'm downstairs in my office. He comes down. I go, handsome. He goes, what? I said, I had a dream. He said, what? I said, I'm supposed to save lives. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but you have to take over the other business. I'm quitting. I'm doing this. And that's how Find to Fab started. I decided to build Find to Fab, which is helping at the time women, I now have men, go from feeling fine, which is how I used to feel, which was effed up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional, to fab, fabulous, awesome, beautiful. So Find to Fab started. And then I turned around and I said to Tony, when I made this decision, I said, I don't know what to do. And he says, what do you mean? I said, how do I give away something that I've been how do I sell something I've been giving away for free for so long? Oh, that's, that's a question right there. That I think that I need to write that one down. Tell me the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the answer. So the answer, he says, if you're so bent on giving it away, scholarship someone into your program every year. And that's exactly what we did because I started a program. It wasn't just me. I brought in other experts as well as myself that have their own expertise in an area. Maybe I didn't have, and I feel would serve my app, my, client. And the spine to fab was really about helping people stop self-sabotaging and learning to fly first love yourself. So that's what find to fab was. But what people didn't, I didn't realize what's going to happen is as I was helping people stop hurting themselves, then they were in the point where they're ready to build their business. 
The other piece is that if you have to be the trusted guide, and if you are the mess, you're the hero, and the hero of the story is the weakest link. You don't ever want to be a hero in your business. You want to be the guide. You know, Donna Miller, who does Story Brand, I'm certified by him as well. I went to Nashville to learn from him because he went on Tony's stage, means I had to learn from him. So I go to Nashville, and I remember him saying that in the movie for um, Karate Kid, Daniel's, remember Daniel's son, he's running, 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 and the bullies are coming after him. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, everybody's looking and thinking, oh, you know, I want to be Daniel, but it wasn't Daniel was the hero. He at the end is the one who beats up the bully. But it was Mr. Miyagi, who was the trusted guy that gave him the skills and the tools to do it. But they don't make Mr. Miyagi the hero, they make him the guide. Daniel's the hero. In all of our stories, if you're the hero, you're the weakest link. I never wanted to be anyone's hero. I wanted to be people's trusted guide. And the reason I did that, Jill, is I found out as a trusted guide, it's somebody who's already walked the walk. I didn't want to be someone who teaches you how to build a million dollar business, but never did one. I didn't want to be someone who tells you how to do something they have never done themselves. And there are more people out there that are preaching and teaching, but haven't actually created the success in their own right. And that's the piece that always got me. So the building fine to fab was really an act of, of giving it away because at that time, I should say, when I started it, I had already been established prior. And when I started over, I realized, wow, not everybody's had this luxury I've had. Not everybody's achieved the success I had. But because I did all the work, I did all the personal work first on me, when it came to building the business and doing it again, I was able to create the wealth that most people took lifetimes to do. I was able to do it in no time at all, where I decided to start a new business. And within three months, I was already tracking six figures. Within the year, I was already in the high six figures. And then every business I ever started, which we ended up owning at one time five from uh, from uh, things in direct sales to web development, to speaking, to consulting, The other thing is you can't sell something until you know what they want and people will buy what they want, not what they need. You need to learn to stop selling what they need and give them what they want. Then you deliver what they need. And knowing these differences because of everything that led me up to here was the gift. And then one day I'm on a trip with some of my clients and we're at a place where they're teaching you how to do, how to have million dollar years. And we walked away and all they did is told us how we can spend an extra 50,000 to learn how to do this. And we get on the plane and my friend, my clients and friends said, Lisa, we're spoiled with you. I said, what do you mean? They said, well, when you train us, you actually give us actionable steps that we can apply immediately and make money with. When we just came back from the weekend, we just found out we have to spend 50,000 more to get the tricks and tips that they're telling us we need to do. And we just spent 5,000. So they said to me, can you just tell us what you're doing? And that was the, the, the premise and the beginning of what turned into this, which was how to build a seven figure coaching business. And it was also what I created called mastery to millions and mastery to millions was taking everything I did from conception of understanding what is your intellectual property? What is it that you do better than anyone else? And how do you bring it to the end user then who is it you're serving and what is it they need? And then how do you market and speak to them in a way that they hear it? And then they raise their hands saying, you're talking to me. I know you are, Jill. I hear you. I want what you have. And then how do you package it so that you don't have to work hard, but you can work smart and you can have big ticket items so that now you can leverage your time and your energy and create programs that will serve them at the highest level. And then how do you deliver it and rinse and repeat this to create raving fans that you don't ever have to look for customers again. Wow. And I know you've done that because you did it with me. And I will tell you of every, I bought a lot of things too. I think I've spent not quite what you've spent, but I've spent a good bit on the six figures on my personal development and training. And um, I would say of everything I've done, you are the only person that I could say truly that took me all the way to the finish line, kicking and screaming sometimes, but took me to the finish line all the way to like, you're getting, you're getting this done. You are getting this program out. You are going to do your webinar. You are going to sell and you're going to make money. And um, that's what I love about you is you definitely do what you say you're going to do. You don't leave people behind and say, well, they bought my program now. I hope that works for you. 
um, you really do stand by people, you care about people, and you want to see them succeed. That's part of your vision. Mm -hmm. Well, my mission is to touch more lives than Oprah by helping people who help others. And if we don't get your message out there, then we're not making the difference. We won't create that ripple effect. So to me, if you say you want to do something, I believe you. And I feel like we need to serve the greater good. And that's by sharing your gifts. And that's the best. Yeah. Part of it. Well, I'm and I love that. And I'm glad you brought up the book and we'll put all the links in it, how they can contact you and uh, everyone check out Lisa's book. It's going to, it's amazing. She's added an addendum even to include AI and how to use AI because she is the expert in AI. Let me tell you, she's studied, how, tell us all the time you've spent on AI and you're doing a six month program coming up on it too. I think I'm up to 1500 hours already this year. So it, 2000 hours a year is a full-time job. So I, kind of, I made it a part-time full-time job on top of what I do. And the funny thing about this, I want to add one other caveat. I don't even know if you know this, Jill. When I actually wrote the book, it was how to build a seven-figure coaching business. Here's the cool part. How to build a seven-figure coaching business. I did it part-time to seven figures. You know, and people think they have to work so hard and you don't. You just have to work so smart. <laughs> you just need to work smart. Yeah. Well, I did. That makes me think of the the time the, when I first met you, the first day I met you, and it was right during the pandemic when it just started. I was again sitting in this chair, and we hopped on a. Everybody was doing Zoom calls. Hey, do you want to get on a Zoom call? And somebody's doing a. Let's have like a group. And so someone, one of the platinum partners, Yvette, um, Yvette, I think it was. Yes, it was. Had, had, a, it had a call, and I knew of her, and um, so I said, "Yeah, I'll jump on." So I jumped on, and you were the only other person that joined that day. And I met you there and you were talking about your latest book and how you wrote it in a week. And I went, huh, how'd you do that? And that was um, four, three and a half years ago, almost four years ago. And um, I remember because I was sitting here with this microphone, with all this equipment, because I wanted to do a podcast and I was watching podcasts on how to make podcasts. And those of you know, my channel is fairly new. And here we are back like eight months ago or nine months ago, I started this channel. So it took me three years to do this in a different format. But um, I remember sitting there with you and you said, in a week, I wrote my book and I went, all right, let's talk sister. I need to know what, how you did this. And so we got on a call that afternoon that night and I was, you were, your everything you said, how you did it, it was like, I want in, how do you do it? I'm Sign me up, here's my credit card. And I signed up and I and started working with you because I was so convinced and, and, and grateful because it you delivered in, uh, in what you offered and what you promised. And, um, yeah. And so you wrote a, that first, that, that second book, I think it was. In a that week. was my second book. You're right. That's brand. you become the expert, more clients, more, more sales, more often. Yes. And yeah. that was my second book. And then this is my third book. So, and there's another book coming out. Did you know that? You just told me about it this morning. So tell me about it. Tell us about oh, it. This one is for Yardley. It's Pickable Anonymous, 12 Steps oh. to Get Addicted. <laughs> You have to know, okay, I, y'all, I've played pickleball once and I really liked it. I was a little bit like, I don't know about this pickleball thing, but I was at staying with Lisa and Yardley several months ago at their house and uh, one weekend and Yardley, her husband is, they both are fanatics in pickleball, but Yardley teaches. So of course, Lisa, you guys wrote a book or he wrote a book on it. So he wrote a book. And then when I started editing it, it became, we wrote a book and made him rewrite it. <laughs> <laughs> Of course you did. He, he asked me to. He asked me to. I did not like make him. He's like, can, well, can you can you help me? Can can you do it with me? <laughs> so we rewrote his book. <laughs> well, that's a great segue because what I'm thinking here is one. You t I want to touch on what you said is that a lot of times I know when I was getting started in this, I said when I went to my first Tony Robbins event, I was I had a matchmaking service here, and I started it, and I said, okay my clients, they don't just need matches, they need coaching. So I'm going to a Tony Robbins event, I'm going to learn something. So I think that's one point you made that's very valid is that not just in relationships or in business, it really affects every area of our life. If we don't work on ourselves first, and we think we are the expert in something, we're going to we're going to either burn out, we're going to fail, we're going to feel like an imposter. And it's going to be tricky, we're going to sabotage, we're going to do a lot of different things. So mm -hmm. really, it's getting that getting those tools under your belt to really prepare yourself emotionally for psychologically to heal wounds that are that are there and traumas and, and deal with some of that. And then you can teach others. And I remember you said to me one time, I love being in this office because it just brings back so many times when we talked mm -hmm. on Zoom with us, is um, 
is that you said, um, I said, yeah, but I just, I, I just, I'm still going through this. And you said, Jill, you only have to be a week ahead of everybody else. <laughs> and I went, I went through a lot of bad times, but we forget about how we got there. And mm -hmm. I think if we can kind of walk through the journey and even journal during that time, we're able to utilize it as we go along and teach others. Yeah, I, I agree with that. And the thing is, it becomes the, the metaphor came to me because I was going to college and I was taking up ballroom dancing and I got a job working for Arthur Murray and they required us to have 300 hours under our belt before we started teaching. And for some reason, they decided to throw us at the wolves and we only had maybe a hundred hours <laughs> under our belt. And then they started giving us clients and the instructor at the time said, you already know more than they do. And I'm like, yeah, I do. I have a hundred hours. They have zero. So you're right. I know more than they do. And that's why I said, you only need to be a week ahead, a month ahead. You, you're already ahead of where they are. And that's the important thing. And I have a very simple rule that makes it easy is you just need to make sure you always leave people better than how you found them. And if you make that your rule, at least it is for me, is that anyone working with me will always leave better than how I, they, I found them because I want to always add value. I want to add something. I want to give something and I want to bring them somewhere. And if that's what your goal is, you know, at the end of the day, I agree with what you said too about the imposter syndrome. Jill, I hear this more and more every day from people, you know, they, they hire me, we're working together. And then I say, okay, this is what we need to do now. We're going to actually put together a talk. They do that. We put together the program. They do that. I say, okay, now we're going to go out there and share it. Now it's, <gasps> can't share this. Like, what am I going to do? And now it becomes, you know, things, the, the poop hits the fan, right? If you've walked the path that somebody else hasn't, you're already ahead. You already know the way out. You already know the way to get there. And if you keep waiting for this perfect path, you'll never go. And other people are going to stay lost. Other people are going to miss the opportunity to get what they ultimately want because you're going to hurt them by trying to be perfect. And for me, I used to come from perfect country and I no longer do, meaning I can't do it unless it's perfect. So I literally strive for imperfection and I tell all my clients, take imperfect action. And that's the gift you can give yourself. If you're growing a business, looking to build a business, you're not going to have all the answers. You're not going to know everything to do. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to fail. And if you don't, it meant you never tried. So if you don't go out and make mistakes, that means you did nothing. For me, my gifts were all my errors. My errors in having to learn how to hire people properly, learning to delegate, because there was a time where nobody can do it better than me. Just ask me, I'll tell you, right? And then I found, well, if I'm doing this, it's not my job. I can't do what I do really well. And that was a big piece I learned in there. So I have simple rules and you've heard them before, but one is automate, delegate, eliminate. And that's figure out if it's under $25 an hour, it's not your job. Who, how do you automate it? How, who can you delegate it to? And what can you eliminate? Because we're doing more things that just keep us busy than making us productive and getting result producing activities that make the register ring ka-ching. And if the register is not ringing, you don't have a business. That means you don't have money. I and mean, if you don't have money, it means you can't help more people and you can't go out there and make a bigger impact because then you need to find ways to support yourself. So we have to become profitable while we're building this business so we can serve more people. I think that's that's so good. Automate, delegate, eliminate, because a lot of us have these, as Preston Brown says, complexity is the enemy of execution. And I'm a master at that. I have been a master of that in the past. And the so path. in the past. And um, so it's it's like it, that's the, the, the fault. That's where we fail to start because it's oftentimes we get so complex with it. It just seems so big that we can't even do it. And that's what I love about your program when you when you worked with me is that you started like with steps. I had a very clear path. We, I knew exactly what, what the out, what the outcome was going to be, what the finished product along the way was going to be. You started with, okay, we need to come up with a niche. What is your niche? And you had me do homework and I had to write down what were things that I, you know, that I was good at, what are the things I love to do? And then finding the things that I didn't love to do. And then those are not for me. And then it's, it's just, it's really this narrowing down. So what I came out with was a signature soundbite, a, um, Am I getting that right? Or is it, is it a sensational soundbite, sensational soundbite, a signature talk, a program, 
a 12-week program called Surviving to Thriving, which I'm going to launch. I'm saying it first here. I'm going to launch it before the first of the year and do it a um, New Year's challenge with everyone and awesome. offer that again And because um, I haven't done that in quite a while. And then, um, and then you have also to the talk, and then we do the webinar. So you teach us how to do a webinar. We create it to the talk from the webinar that we yeah. can actually we talk about repurposing and how yeah. to create our brand. And uh, we, helped, we built a website, and yeah. it was fantastic. And then funnels and how to do sales calls, which – See, I just all of a sudden had to take a breath there because I'm not a big fan of that. <laughs> that's right. I know that's not my area. So I'm like, okay, sell it. Find so that's where I delegate. <laughs> like, can somebody yeah. sell this for me? You know, and that's actually where it became being the trusted guide, giving the tools and resources you need to build a business from A to Z. And a lot of people don't do that. And Jill, the reason I even created the whole program I did with Master in Millions is because I couldn't find anything like it. I couldn't find anything like it. I found different different people out there who had great programs and they would teach you one piece and then they teach you this piece here and they teach you this piece here and you had all these pieces. So I realized one day I went to the nail salon. Sounds like it's off topic, but it's not. I went to the nail salon, they're holding my hands and they're doing my nails. And I realized that when someone's holding my hands, I'll do whatever they tell me to do. As soon as they let go of me, all of a sudden I go out and do sh stuff and I mess up my nail <laughs> polish and it's all crazy and it's a mess. And I said, oh, geez, isn't that my life? I'm great when someone's holding my hand, but when I do it on my own, I get confused. I make mistakes. I have to clean it up myself. I'd rather have someone help me. And that's how all my stuff got created. I created what I couldn't find. I wanted someone to hold my hand. So I give people the opportunity to have someone hold their hand, as you know, and even more so that having someone look at what you're doing and telling you why it'll work and why it won't. And mm -hmm. that, you know, has been my, my magic powers for years. And that's because I studied human psychology. If you don't understand, you can't influence people till you know what influences them. I have this very simple decipher key. If I look at what you're doing and I don't think I can sell it, then I'm in trouble. So I have to figure out, as I did for yours, how am I going to sell Jill's program? Because if mm -hmm. I know I can sell it, then I know I can get you to sell it. Like you said, I want somebody else to do it for me. I already did. I made sure I can sell it. And you did sell. You did get clients. And that's the beauty of it is you can do that. And, you, and that's the piece where we can rinse and repeat. And then I do give you a million dollar close because that was the funny part. I had more people say to me, I don't want to have to do this. I said, okay, I'm going to give you a script. You're going to learn it. And then you can even teach somebody this script on how to do it. And it works one out of five times. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool for me. It's more like three or four out of five times, but if you never sold anything before, you'll still probably enroll one out of five. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's brilliant. It's really brilliant. And the webinar and just, it, that really helped me find my voice and also really honestly with my personal experience because it was about my loss of my husband that i was um you helped me walk through the journey so it was actually a twofold thing it was almost like a little bit of therapy to go through that process to re retell it and then to see it from someone else's perspective and how it might serve them the things that i experienced and how to how to help them avoid what they might uh, be going through or they might anticipate they might have to go through at some point i know a lot of people out there are probably thinking the same now I'm thinking about that too, then and I'm saying, okay, how does someone find their niche? Because I know with a lot of programs we've, we've heard about that are do people are selling programs out there, yeah. big ones. And, you know, you said Yardley with his, with pickleball, right. is it, can, can people sell anything? Like there's a, there's a whole trend now. It's like, oh, you know what? I'd love to garden and I love to, or I love to, you know, um, bake organic pastries can I, can I make a business out of that? You know, how do they know what, what to, what to focus on? Well, that's a great question. I think first you should find a niche that you fall in love with. You know, I wouldn't want to have to spend the time and energy on something I didn't love passionately. I love helping people build business and make money. This to me is, is fun. It's effortless. It's something I can do every single day. I, I, you know, that's easy. You want to do something that just brings you joy because when it brings you joy, it's not work. So that's the first thing. The other is find a need. Like, look at what's out there. Find out what's missing. Find what you wanted, what you couldn't find. Or how can you deliver something that's already out there and we already know has 
a huge market, but you can deliver it in a better way. The challenge is instead of selling, I'm a coach, you should be selling your solution. Maybe your solution is I help people end eating disorders. I help people get, um, get more confidence. I am a performance coach. Like sell the solution instead of the I'm a coach, I'm a coach, I'm a coach, because they can't differentiate you to what you're doing and why they should choose you over someone else. So start selling the result. I think the easiest scenario to give you is I sell shovels. Do you want my shovel? Mm, nah. I mean, no, if I'm no. shovels, but yeah, maybe. Maybe, no. I don't know, right? I don't really want my shovel. But now if I turn around, I say, Jill, and I know where you are now in Buenos Aires, but say it was snowing outside. Jill, there's three feet of snow outside your door. I knock on your door. I sell shovels. Do you want my shovel? Yeah, of course. I need it. Now you want one. my shovel. Find out people's needs and then sell them what they want. Mm. What people are doing instead is they're going, I sell shovels. I sell shovels. Nobody wants your shovel. But you say there's, look, you want to get out of your home? You want to be able to get out fast? I have this amazing shovel, right? Now it's like, oh, I want that shovel. But they didn't want it before. But if they know what it need it's going to fill and how it's something they want, they want to get out, then they're interested in your shovel. We got to learn to end marketing myopia and be specific <laughs> to what we offer. I think that is such a good point because I wrote something down about that. I think today, especially in social media and all this thing, all these things we have going on, is that we compare ourselves to other people and where they are. And we think, oh, man, that's a big, that's a, some big shoes to fill. I don't know if I can do that. And so we, we play small and it's, it's hard to, it, it can be challenging to get started when we feel like we're not, we're, we're not, we're, we doubt ourselves and able to be where that could be, whatever that comparison is. Well, I think it's quite fascinating. I remember one of my mentors was making a million dollars a year and I had compared myself to her at one day. And I was like, wow, she's starting this business and within three years, she was making a million a year. And I'm saying to myself, oh, I was doing the same thing as her, not what I'm doing now, what I was doing back 30 years ago. I'm doing the same thing. And I wasn't making a million a year in three years. And I couldn't understand. I'm, I'm thinking no smarter than me. You know, she's wonderful. I love her, but she doesn't have anything I don't have. And the one thing I had to remember, she had 11 years of an education before she started that business in the direct sales industry of what didn't work. And she never succeeded that when she found a plan that did work in three years, she was at a million a year. So it didn't take her three years. It took her three plus 11. It took her 14 years to succeed, not three I have seen a lot of people out there, Jill, where I've compared myself to them and they're out, they're doing 50 million a year, you know, hundred million a year. And I'm saying, I'm only doing a couple. Why are, why are they doing so much more than me? Well, first, I only want to work three days a week. <laughs> so that's my own limiter. I don't want to work hard. The second is I found out some of these people have 18 years doing what they're doing and I'm comparing myself to them without enough information to know that they are some of their parts too. They have been ramped up and doing stuff for decades to get them where they are. And so have you. You have been doing things for decades to get you where you are. And you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And the only one we should ever be comparing ourselves to is ourselves. Comparing ourselves to ourselves, we're, we're only, I always say every day, I, I say, okay, Jill, that was good, but you can do better. It's, it's comparing myself to me. I love that. And knowing my worth, knowing how I feel about myself, it's really, that really, and, this is the game, the value. And, and I uh, would love to say, but I can, Jill, but you can do even better because that presupposition is so important because as soon as you said you can do better, it implied you didn't already do great. Mm, and when we say even better, then we're giving ourselves permission to say that a girl, I'm doing great and I can do even better from here. Yes, yes, I love that. And I think that's what's so good is, is going, we say we don't want to reflect and look back on the past, but at the same time, I think those are really critical things to do is to actually see how far we've come. We often forget all the progress that we've made. And you said too, is sometimes we look at people who are further ahead than us because of maybe their education, their wealth, whatever, wherever they are in life. And we forget, like, I remember you said, well, I said, well, I haven't worked in, in a job in like 10 years or more. I can't remember how long it was at the time. And you said, but look at the life experiences you've had. 
Mm-hmm. That's that's experience. And I went, oh, yeah, it is. Huh. I mean, sure Jill, is. you have mastered so many things on growing yourself, growing a business, wealth mastery in a way that most people never get that education. Even if they go to school, they won't get it. And a lot of women today, especially in the world that we're in, are either divorced or widowed and totally need what you have. Why? Because they don't even know they're looking for it. They just know they're concerned at this point of how am I going to support myself? Or do I need to get married again to have someone support me? Or how can I do this? Or I don't know how to read the stock thing. I don't know what I have here. I don't know who I can trust. And then they have someone who's saying, you know what? I know how you feel. I felt the same way too until I found this, this, and this, and let me show you how. That's the gift in finding what we do well. That's the gift in understanding that life experience prepared you for something that people can't even get an education in school for. Sure, true that, nor that I want people to, but um, it's it's a good, good, yeah, well, thank you for the plug on my program, Um, (laughs) because that's what it is, Um, but uh, stay tuned, more coming soon. Um, but, you know, it hits me, too, is going back, um, the whole thing about experience is then you said before about the hero and the guide and the heroes that we're seeing out there that don't have the experience that are putting it out there and saying, I can show you how to make millions. I can all these different things, whatever it might be. Right. Yeah. Um, and they haven't walked the walk. They haven't done it. And it's fascinating because they may not be getting the results, but their their social media looks like they're very successful. Yeah. And they're like, wow, everybody was, I want to look like them. Look at all the followers they have. Oh my gosh. But they're so busy being the hero. Look at mm-hmm. me. I think I remember, I'm going to just tell on myself versus being the guide, which is the one who just stands in the background and guides someone, which actually is the more respected position in a way, if you want to take, take ego into it for a second, is that they're the more respected person because they've, they've already walked on the journey. They don't have to be on the top of the stage to be, or, you know, or, or in the front to be the ones who's actually making the difference. It's the person we're helping and guiding. And I, I like to call myself today like a way shower. I think someone and I, that I met re- a while back that used that when I said, I like that way shower. But something that I wanted to get to is that people aren't buying the, the, the heroes because you said to me, I'm, I was going to say, I'm telling on myself, is I remember when we were creating my program. And I was doing things and you said, Jill, I'll be honest, no one is going to be able to relate to you because you're like living in a glass tower. You are, you're, you, you're like showing it like I've made it, I've arrived. Now you can learn, learn from me. And it took me a few years now to figure out like, oh yeah. Okay. Now I get it at the time. I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, (laughs) but now I understand. And I think a lot of us do that. I, we see that a lot in social media is that I don't want to use the word show off, but it's kind of like we're showing everybody what we think they want to see. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just, we have to be real. You know, we have to be real and just say, hey, you know, this just happened to me. And, or I'm I'm going through this, or I went through this and, you know, it wasn't easy. Mm-hmm. And it's still a struggle, but let me show you how I can do it. And I think those coaches and those people that are speaking on stages today or that are showing up as leaders in the world, they're saying that. They're the ones that are most respected. They're not the ones who are sitting in the glass tower saying, everyone, look at me, I've done it. It's the authenticity. I think that's super important is, and the humanization of me being real is actually what people fell in love with was all the time they kept thinking, well, Lisa's perfect. She has everything. She lives in the, you know, the glass bubble too. spot it. You got it. And she don't, she would never understand. And I remember when people would complain and why they can't do something, why they didn't achieve something, I would listen and I'd say, okay, okay, you ready to move forward? Like, I would like, okay, and let's, let's go forward. And they'd wonder, oh, you, you just don't have feelings. No, I have feelings and I've been there and wallowing in it is not going to change the situation. It's not going to get us out of it. Let's move forward. And I just want to move forward. And Jill, you know, I mean, we've had more um, challenges in our lives over the last two to three years than people could have ever imagined. And I believe that we're where we are because I practice what I preach still to this day. Mm. And I know it's because I have an attitude of gratitude because I know there's always another side to everything. I know nothing is permanent. Everything is going to continue to change. And I look for what's good, not what's bad. 
And when we take that disposition, we can actually have everything we ever wanted. If we live in self-pity and doubt and fear and imposter syndrome, and I can't, I, I won't, and all the other stuff, you're going to get exactly what you don't want. And if you want to succeed, you want to make a difference, you want to help other people, be the example and just go first. Go first. I love that. Be the example and go first. I want to jump into something else um, before we finish is, because I know it's the big million dollar question, is how much money can you really make as a coach? I mean, let's like, okay, so what are we talking here? Like, what's the deal? Tell us, tell us what it looks like. Give well, us some I examples or whatever the, works for you. The, the irony for so many people is that the average coach today only makes like 28,000 a year, which is not even enough to pay my taxes. So <laughs> I couldn't imagine that being a good deal. And the coaching business is so big. If you know how to do it properly and package and market yourself and really deliver unbelievable value easily, you could be making high six figures, seven figures coaching. And you know, several of the people I've helped like Vinu Keller who came to me and she was an in-home turnaround expert when I met her. And she wasn't making six figures yet. And she didn't even think she could afford me, Jill. And she actually, I will never break your anonymity. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, I have an amazing testimonial on my website from Venu saying, you know, she literally took out a credit card to be able to pay me for the coaching. And I started saying it's six months. People normally stay with me for a couple of years. She's like, I'm staying with you for a year. She didn't even know what it was, didn't even know what it was yet. She already made the decision it was a year. And within the first, I think it was four or five weeks, she had made 70,000, which was almost as much as she had made in a year. By within nine months, she was at a quarter million. By the end of the year, she was over $450,000 in her coaching. And we just did literally everything from I had to give her, we educated her on who her real avatar was because she really didn't know who it was. We needed to change her marketing. The terminology was all wrong. She was an in-home turnaround expert. You don't know what that is. We changed it to a parent-child peacemaker, like the parent whisperer. That we know what it is, right? She ends the chaos in the home. And we changed all the marketing around it. We changed her website, how she put it out there. We put together programs for her, her talks, and she just nailed it. She just continued to nail it, and she just keeps making more and more every year. So super proud of her. And I have another one, and you know the other one, Jeremy. Jeremy came to yeah. me. He's and, been on the show. Yeah, and he actually is and helps people with stock and crypto and everything else. And he was doing his talks, and the talks is Jeremy's like this cool kid. You know, he likes to talk about hey, cool, and then we had fun. And I was like, no, Jeremy, people don't care about fun. They want to know if they're gonna make money. <laughs> we need to change some of the language. And I helped him with his talks that sell, and we we modified it, we connived it, we changed it. Within three months, he did a million dollars in sales on his talks that sell. You know. And I helped Todd Hartley and created funnels for him and what he was doing with his packages and creating six-figure launches. And I have a list and you know that, and you can just go to my website and see it of just people who, you know, didn't, didn't even make money before or any real money and literally put zeros at the end of their packages and ended up doing five-figure launches that didn't do that before. And you can just go on the site and you'll hear people that in three to six months making six figures and they never saw that in their life in the coaching business and been very blessed to be able to help a lot of people make a difference. And I don't think it's actually the money, but the money seems to be the metrics that people need to hear when you ask me how much can they make. And I think the best goal I gave myself is, you know, I, I kept thinking you have to work full time or you have to work hard to make seven figures. And I thought about it and I was like, where did this shit come from? <laughs> it's, it's so not true. And I did a launch for, you know, how to do it, uh, how, to, how to build a, a, the signature talks that sell, right? A seven figure talk that sells. And I did this launch and each time I did the launch, I did a half a million in sales. So in two launches, I did a million dollars and I'm thinking, hmm, why am I working full time? I should just be working two, three days a week. So I turned around, I told my husband, I go, handsome, I'm going to work three days a week and we're going to just gonna make seven figures three days a week. He goes, okay. And it's exactly what I did. So Jill, I just changed my goal again. And I said, you know what? I think I'm going to do two days and make seven figures. He goes, okay. And I just, and all it is, it's so much 
everything I'm sharing with you is is eighty percent mindset, twenty you know twenty percent mechanics. And when you understand that your business is you, and you are your business, and people are buying you, if you don't believe it, if you don't show up for it, if you don't deliver, then you don't have a business. If you have an amazing product, you can make a difference. You're going to change lives. You're going to make a lot of money. You will, as soon as you learn how to market it and you know what you're doing, to whom you're serving, and and where you're going to make that biggest difference for them. And when you learn to communicate in a manner they can hear you, then you're set up to win. You're set amazing. Up to win. You're set up to win. I I mean that that's inspiring and for anybody. And and you're talking about some people that are. Uh, probably already established coaches and I know you people brought people from scratch and didn't even know what they were going to coach on and started in the same thing well let me even tell you about Brenda Brenda started she's a Reiki master she came to me as a Reiki master do you know Reiki masters were getting 45 dollars an hour and Brenda comes to me and said well Brenda, you're not going to charge 45 an hour you're going to do 195 an hour she's like I can't do 100 I go yes you can and oh, then, you're letting your charge by the hour because you always told me don't don't charge. No, by no, the no, hour. no, no. We just we, well, thank you. Thank you for saying that. No, I did not let her go by the hour. I was just going to lead you to what happened. I needed okay. her to figure <laughs> out where the hours were and amateurizing it because she had this mentality. And I, you're right. No, I did not let her charge by the hour. So what happened is she had this thing about these numbers and they were so low. And I said, no, that's not what you're doing. You're not selling your hours. You're selling transformation. I said, but your transformation cannot be less than 195 an hour for you to figure out what you're selling and how to price it. So we ended up creating her programs and she went from that 195 value to getting up to 400 an hour value to getting up to $500 value that now she's selling programs for $7,800. And her last year was a quarter million dollars working part-time while homeschooling three boys. Oh my so, gosh. So when people say, and, and here's someone who didn't have a list, did, wasn't known, just starting a business out of the thing. The first year she did six figures. The second year she continued. She was she was like about 180. Then she kept doing more. And then she got to 250. And it's still part-time, still part-time. And I remember when COVID came, she got so scared She because Reiki, she felt she had to be with you. And I said, no, you don't. So we had to work on her mind and we got her to see she can do it even on Zoom. And we changed her model got her repositioned the way she was seeing it, what she was marketing, and she just nailed it. And I mean, I have more like her too. So great stories. Okay. You know, a, a lot mm -hmm. of people, I have a lot of people that are Tony Robbins coaches prior wanting to start their own business. And I know you have, a, we have a personal friend in that as well. And, mm -hmm. you know, Allison who did it and she gave me a beautiful testimonial in her first six months, I think she came out of the gate starting her own practice on sex and intimacy, not something she had done before, no lists or anything else. And I believe her number was, she did $136,000 in six months. Yeah. Yeah. Coming she out, did. Yeah. Something start, like that. Starting fresh. So possibilities are endless. I think that your number, anybody's number is their number. You know, it's not to put a cap on yourself, just you know, I, I've been known just to throw out a number and say, this is what I'm going to make. And I do. And I believe it's because my unconscious mind doesn't know the difference between what's real and vividly imagined. So if I tell it something often enough, it believes it to be true and it'll help me become true. And it's been very good at serving me that way. And, and that's pretty much how I create the wealth all the time. <laughs> I, I love that. And because it's so true, it's, it's our subconscious can't take a joke. It, it, it believes whatever said. So we have to feed it well and, and tell it good things that we want to see happen for us. Um, boy, this has been such a great ch talk, talk today. Um, I know people who are, who've been living in fear or thinking of what like a career change, a pivot, you know, as you've called me the reinvention queen, you know, it's what could you do? What can you do with your life? If you're thinking about something different, and you're wanting to serve or you want you have an idea you know there's just so much you can do and i think this formula and the way that you do it and what your book is and what you have to offer there's just nobody out there that's any better i gotta tell you you've got it all you're bringing it all together in one package and um so i would definitely recommend everyone watching if you know somebody that needs this someone who's struggling with with where to go next in life or, you know something they want to do different if it's you don't be afraid. Take take a chance on yourself and just take that leap of faith and do something. Reach out to Lisa. Get her book. It's awesome. It's a free book. 
Yeah, I believe it's a free book, right? And it's going to the link is below. It's going to be in the description. So check that out and sign up and get a call with Lisa too. If you want to do what I did and what so many others have done, um, mm -hmm. find out if it's for you. Cause I think, uh, and she'll see if you're a fit because you know, there's just, there's a lot of potential out there and there's a lot of money you made. And it's not about just making money. It's about helping other people. And you've taught me more than anything is it's really a transfer of energy because when I'm helping someone, I, I it should come back to me as well. It's not just a, I'm not trying to rip people off. I'm actually trying to serve. I'm, I'm serving someone and giving them a gift and they're, they're, they're compensating in return. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate you. I love you so much and give my best to Yardley. And I can't wait to see the pickleball book. <laughs> I love you too. And you will see it. You'll see pickleball anonymous coming out soon. <laughs> well, no, and I, Oh, is that what it's going to be called? Mm -hmm. Really? Oh, I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> That's going to be, that is going to be a bestseller. I already can tell that's a title. That's a bestseller period. It awesome. is a bestseller. He'll be all over TV with uh, 12 steps to get 12 steps to get you addicted. So we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, this is what I do. If I can't do it for him, I got to do it for my family too. Right? <laughs> right. That's right. Well, thank you everyone. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks everyone for watching today. Definitely leave some comments. Let me know what you want to hear more of leave some comments for Lisa, ask some questions, go get her free book, sign up for a call with her, reach out to me on social. We're going to have all the social media buttons you can find down there that you can follow us. I know Lisa has some great free content that she offers. There's so much value you can get from Lisa just by checking her out and following her. So do that as well. All right. All right, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Thank you again, Lisa, and stay connected.